where governorship primaries across some states of the Federation by the People's Democratic Party have thrown up mixed uh, fortunes for aspirants. Some of those that emerged as candidates were expected, while others were a complete surprise. This is put together by uh, one of us, Kendi Amodu. Take a look. Kano is one of the states steeped in politics where surprises spring up every political season. The ruling All Progressives Congress has its issues with many members of a faction of the party moving into the newly rejigged new Nigeria People's Party, NNPP. Across the river, the People's Democratic Party has issues. Two factions of the party produced two candidates, Muhammad Abacha and Sadiq Wali, son of elder statesman Aminu Wali. In Kaduna, former member of the House of Representatives and candidate of the PDP in the 2019 general elections, Isa Ashiru won the ticket of the PDP. A former executive director of the First Bank, Northern Zone, Dauda Lawal, emerged the candidate of the People's Democratic Party in Zamfara State. Three other aspirants had withdrawn for the exercise few minutes into the process, citing irregularities and substitution of national delegates. In Gombe State, 328 delegates from 114 wards, 11 local government areas and 11 national delegates voted in primaries which saw Mohamed Bardi emerge as the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party. There is no surprise that in Adama State, incumbent Amadou Finturi was returned unopposed as candidate, while his counterpart in Oyo State, Sheyi Makinde, soundly trounced his opponent in the primaries. These results from the People's Democratic Party primaries show an opposition party that has shown up for work. But will that be enough to wrest power from the All Progressives Congress? The, the fact that money and paramount power of incumbents still play so much role in the determination of whomsoever emerges at our uh, primaries and at various levels of elections demonstrated the fact that we are not growing our electoral democracy and this is seriously uh, negating our developmental democracy. A school of thought believes as a fallout of the primaries there are quite a number of contestants that will move to other parties. They may likely, we may likely have a kind of a result where many people that are de-enfranchised or consider themselves to have been so do, uh, done to, we, we, we move out of the party. Uh, that cannot be uh, unexpected. You have seen that even Peter will be, without getting to the real primary, have pulled out from PDP and things of that nature. So Now, while that may not be new in the Nigerian political system, the slowly growing influence of alternate political platforms may spring up surprise in 2023. By the 4th of June, a clear picture of the character of the new leadership in 2023 at all tiers of government will slowly start to emerge. Kendi Amodu, Trust TV News, Abuja. All right. Well, thank you, Kendi, for that report. And now let's uh, take perspectives from this. Uh, we still have in the studio Nuruddin Abdullah, editor of the 21st Century Chronicle. And also joining us via phone uh, from Lafia is a member of the APC, Aliu Audu. Let's begin uh, by welcoming you to the program. Thank you. All right. Uh, Aliu, thank you for staying with us and thank you for joining uh, the Daybreak Show this morning. Thank you. Good morning for having me. All right. Well, uh, you heard it, you know, from what we are seeing, new revelations are showing quite a lot of surprises that are springing up uh, from the primary elections uh, as it's, you know, happening. Uh, are you surprised yourself with some of the revelations that we are seeing? Um, I mean, quite frankly, there's been no surprise so far. If you have been following um, politics in the recent times, you know that, um, I mean, we would have anticipated most of the happening, as we've seen. So, I mean, we just waited for the big elephant, the presidential. That's, that's where, you know, 
you can you can't really you know say what's going to be what. But as for the House of Assembly and the gubernatorial that has been concluded so far, little surprises here and there. I mean, but there isn't anything major out of the ordinary. Mm. All right. Now, uh, are you concerned about you know what is going to unfold by the end of the primaries? Uh, uh, we are already seeing massive. Well, well, we are seeing some you know very very big figures you know decamping from political parties even at the last minute. A lot of people are going to be aggrieved by the end of uh, these primaries, whether because of the, the feeling of you know imposition of candidates. Uh, and all of that. Do you have such fears? Really? Yes. If, if, if you understand, some of us in the APC for a long time have always warned against the um, position of um, candidates, not just so as the party, uh, our party can win elections, but for people to have um, the kind of faith and belief in democracy and the and, um, processes that are involved in democracy, um, what we call activities like this. But the moment the Nigerian populace lose hope in democracy, then um, we, we find ourselves in a very difficult position. But I really, I really do not think that anything so far has been different, especially in my party by the way the, the whole electoral law and um, our own internal activities put up this ongoing primary across the country. I mean, the, the, the change in the structure and the size of delegates alone will have a massive impact on the economy. But we expect that the major players still have been in the game and have done their due diligence before be able to, you know, come out to two. Yeah, what they are. All right. Now, well, you talk about you know people losing faith in the process. Would you say that that's maybe one of the reasons why we're seeing some sort of increase, you know, and you know the payment of or the monetization of the process? Uh, the delegates, for instance, we've heard how some you know they vote based uh, based on uh, you know strictly who paid the highest. Uh, and all of that. And how dangerous is that, you know, for our political process? All right. I mean, uh, monetization of the electoral process, particularly at the primary level, isn't really um, anything new. But um, it's, the fact that it's happening after this is just a sign that overall, at different levels, especially at the state level, you know, governance hasn't been as good as it should be. But if governance has been, you know, as good as it should be, it has been, it, it has been people-centric. You know, and this is not just about a particular political party, it's across, like we've witnessed in, um, in the primary election so far. Um, if the people out of whom the delegates are selected believe they have good governance, believe or expect to have good governance, I am sure they will have no reason to want to monetize their vote. They want to sell off their vote. But in a situation where the average delegate believes that the only time he or she gets to see the aspirant or the candidate or the governor, the House of Assembly member, it's every four years. And after the four years, it's bye-bye till another four years. You know, it, 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 it takes, it takes um, a morally upright delegate do not want to pay for that, you know, party that is only read that every four years. Mm. That is where the challenge of good governance mm. and the potential governance comes from. Mm. But, but should when, this even be an option at all? Maybe let me throw this to uh, Nuruddin Abdullah, you know, uh, resorting to, you know, because of the feeling that, oh, well, I mean, if we do not take as much as we, we can take now, uh, eventually when the, this person gets to office, uh, he's not going to look to us. So should that even be an option right now, really? Looking at the implications. Yes. Like he must have said, uh, morally upright delegates. How many do we have? 
You can have a morally upright delegate if you don't have morally upright politicians. Let's look at this uh, side by side with why are they defecting? Peter will be defected. How many Republicans in the United States defected to Democratic Party after losing primaries? How many Democratic candidates, aspirants, defected to Republican Party after losing primaries? Come to the UK, it's closer to us. How many conservative members defected to Labour Party after losing elections? Yeah, but in the case of OB, I mean, there was, the primaries has not even no, been conducted. That's what yet. I'm saying. Yes. It's a desperation. Just don't blame the delegate. The politicians are desperate. There you can count. Between 20, 1999 to that, I know a politician who contested elections in more than five political parties. Why? It simply means that when you are outsmarted from the party, a money back came and sweep you away. Then you look for other parties. Thankfully, INEC has even reduced that uh, uh, madness. Do you know why? By registering more than 76 political parties. You are a PDP chieftain, but you have registered maybe about three political parties, and they are in your, the, the papers are in your wardrobe. She's an APC uh, chieftain, but she has caused the registration of more than two other political parties as an emergency, as an alternative. So that's the situation. The politicians have failed every Nigerian. It has reached to this extent whereby the delegates believe that it is not the summonization that matters. You can say all the good things in this world, but the moment we elect you and you leave, that's the end. So, but, you know, for the delegates themselves to resort to this, uh, and, you know, basing all their decisions on the highest bidder itself. It's a failure also on their part, isn't it? It's, they have failed themselves, isn't it? And failing other Nigerians that they are supposedly representing, you know, in this instance. What we're saying here is this. Our democracy is almost 24 years old, this, this current dispensation. What has changed? Cause and effect, Mr. Yuba. We should ask ourselves, why this sudden monetization? Okay, now talking about delegates, we've also seen, you know, attacks towards this delegate in recent times. So why is that as well? Is it targeted? In fact, in Niger, yeah, about yeah, four people were killed. Were killed. Mm. Uh, three, rather, from what we heard, okay. yeah. were killed in Niger. Exactly, because of the failure of the political leadership to safeguard the lives and property of Nigerians. It's as simple as that. They have failed in all spectrums of life. Is it security? And you know, one of the reasons actually from what we heard is that these three delegates, they, you know, expressed reservations about, about a, list a list of delegates, of delegates that, you know, were, that was produced mm. uh, from, the gov from the governor or something like that. And so, and that, you know, they were killed. That's what the report Political said. Political assassination. But now, um, or non gunmen, right? Or bandits. And no police case. Why? These are poor delegates. Yes. You have to look at the political ecosystem holistically to understand why the desperation. If, for instance, now in Kaduna, like happened in Kaduna, a particular candidate says he is not going to give a dime. And he got only two votes. Good. Why other candidates didn't do the same? It takes two people to commit uh, um, bribes, I want to say. The giver and the receiver. Mm -hmm. We decide, okay, let's say uh, we had we had APC, any politician that induces delegate will be automatically disqualified. Do we have those clauses in our rules? No. Why? Hmm. All right, let me uh, throw this to Aliu. Now, Aliu, the president is still not clear about his anointed candidate, quote-unquote, 
uh, for the presidency. And this is, you know, less than 48 hours to the uh, presidential primaries of the APC. How does that make you feel? And what's the uh, atmosphere like within your party? Hello, Aliyu. Okay, it looks like we've lost uh, Aliyu. Well, yes, we're yes. Uh, so I'm saying that, uh, uh, you know, it's less than 48 hours to the presidential primaries in your party, the APC, uh, from what we've heard uh, till now, yeah. the, the, there's not been screening, and then the president has also not made his own uh, position as to, you know, his preferred uh, candidate. Are we in for surprises, just like we saw with the national chairmanship uh, of the of the APC? Um, okay, before I, I speak on this, uh, allow me just speak briefly on the, what my um, fellow discussants have, have just mentioned regarding the Niger State. Uh, if the information I have gotten regarding that serves me right, um, the delegates, it, it's, it's about actually leadership failure on many fronts. And I'll tell you, this, this particular, you know, avoidable death is down to inability of organizations like political parties and leaders to ensure that there is a steady process and ensure that they have a continuous process improvement strategy that primarily, primarily safeguard life and make lives better. I do not think that with the few delegate list, with the few delegates that, that are qualified for this election, based on the electoral, you know, um, amendment, electoral uh, law amendment, you would expect that um, delegates get to the venue of the primary. Then there is still confusion about who are delegates and who are not. Then, I mean, on the other part, is, I do not understand how a presidential, a gubernatorial um, delegate travels all the way from wherever he or she is to the point of casting a vote without going in the midst of identification. So it was about, from what I read, they were to go back and get means of identification when this happened. I mean, I, I really don't know how true that is, but if that is, before we say leadership failure, we will equally say people failure, because the leaders are nothing but the reflection of the people. And in this same situation, you can tell how failure on both sides, you know, has led, has led to loss of life. Mm -hmm. All right. And, um, on, the, on, on the issue of anointing, I mean, I think um, if, if, if you understand the President clearly, uh, I, I definitely do not expect that he's going to have any anointed candidate. However, like you mentioned about the, conven the, the National Convention, yeah, that was quite a surprise. But then again, national convention to elect party leaders, you know, national working committee of the party is different from um, primary election to elect, you know, um, candidates that are going to stand the election in, you know, um, in general election. And if you have followed Mr. President, all the way, he has always maintained that he's going to hand over to whoever Nigerian speak. If you remember when he said that, and um, I mean, anointing a candidate takes you know that away from the people. So I I I am of the opinion that Mr. President is going to bless everybody in 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 the in the election, like he has always said, he's for everyone and he's for no one. And mm. let the uh, aspirant go into the battleground and you know slug it out and let probably the the most electable candidate or the most prepared candidate or the most sold candidate in the eyes of the delegate mm. will emerge as yeah. our president. Yeah, yeah. But, but you know in election. Yeah, but you know in one of the interactions with the president, the president said he is not going to reveal who he is a, a preferred candidate. It means that he has one. Doesn't mean that he doesn't, isn't it? Quite quite frank, quite frankly, the way it is, I do not think um um, I think what he meant is um, he has an interested candidate, but he's going to keep it to his chest. Yes. And um, I, I do not think 
in, in means in any way that he's going to force his choice on the people, especially when the electoral law has clearly made it in, in, in such a way that he can't even vote. He, the president, cannot even vote for a delegate, and I think that's some sort of um, relief. Okay, all right. Him. Looking okay. at the aspirants, and, and I can tell you that if not all of them, at least 95 of them are very close to Mr. President. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, uh, Aliu Aldu, for your thoughts. Maybe we'll just get briefly your concluding thoughts on this before we uh, wrap up. Yeah. To, I don't think that you can understand the problem, the enormity of the problem, if 20, 48 hours to the presidential primaries, presidential aspirants by the ruling party are not screened yet. The president is still mum. Nobody knows his direction. Why this lack of transparency? There is, we can avoid, it's a, the, the, the ruling party is sitting on a ketchup bar, we can powder. Left or right, anointed candidate or not, there will be implosion. And that's what they are trying to manage. So it's more like postponing the evil postponing day. Postponing the evil day. And you know, it's the, just, this is the normal uh, trend of this uh, uh, administration. They don't do things at the right time. Right. Whether the, the president announces his uh, anointed candidate or not, there will be implosion. Mm. You can collate the 100 million from almost 30 people mm. and just overnight and say that, okay, I'm picking Mr. Ayuba, I'm keeping him, um, I'm picking Zainab. No. All right. All right then. Well, thank you so much. Uh, unfortunately, we have to end this.